Our next unit is going to be on regression. You should have seen this some last year with linear regression, and so now we're going to take it and apply it to our quadratics and exponentials. So whenever we're talking about regression, we're talking about plotting points and finding a line or a curve that fits our data so that we can use it to predict something in the future, something years after. All right, so when we find a line or curve that closely approximates a set of data, we're finding a line of best fit. We have correlation that shows that two events have a relationship, two events have a relationship. All right, our correlation coefficient is r, and it's a, a measure that shows how well data are modeled by a linear equation. Remember, this is just for linear equations. r can be between negative 1 and 1. When r is close to negative 1, the data have a negative correlation. When r is close to positive 1, the data have a positive correlation. If r equals 0, the data doesn't have a correlation. That means we have points all over the place and they don't really form a curve or a line. All right. When r, the closer r is to negative 1 and 1, the stronger it is. So the farther away from 0 it is, the stronger of a correlation you have. So before we start our examples, I want to do a couple of things on the calculator. So looking at your calculator, three things. First, I want you to go to your y equals and make sure it's cleared out. We're going to be looking at our graphs, and I don't want your graphs to be to have interference with the, any lines that you have in your y equals. All right. Second thing, we're going to go turn our stat plot on. So you're going to go second stat or second y equals to get your stat plot. All right. You're going to go to plot one. Now mine's already highlighted, but yours may have off highlighted. So just make sure you're over on. Press enter. Make sure on's highlighted. All right. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to turn our diagnostic on. To do that, we're going to go second and the zero button to get to our catalog. And then you can either scroll down to diagnostic or since we have our little A in the top right corner, that tells us our alpha lock tells us our alpha lock is on. So we can just go find D, which is x to the negative 1, and that'll bring us to our D's. And from there, we just scroll down to find diagnostic on. Once you have the arrow next to it, press enter. It'll bring you back to your main screen, and then press enter again. All right, now we have our diagnostic on, and we're ready to go. So our first example is of linear regression. All right, the table shows a life expectancy for people born in the United States. Use a graphing calculator to make a scatter plot of the data. Find an equation for and graph a line of regression. And then use the equation to predict the life expectancy of a person born in 2025. All right, so we're going to end up typing this stuff in to our list and then plotting it and finding an equation to fit those points. But before we type this in, okay, 1983 can be a big number to type in. Same with 1990, 1993. Those are all kind of big. So to make these numbers more manageable, we'll say something like zero, our zero year, is 1980. So if 1980 is our zero year, 1983 would be 3, 1990 would be 10, and 13, 17, 20, 23. Now it's more manageable that we can plug it into our calculator. Now we're back with our calculator. So to type these in, we're going to go to stat, and then we're going to click enter for edit. And we're going to type in our L1 and our L2. L1 is going to be our year, and L2 is going to be our life expectancy. But remember, for L1, we're doing 3, 10, 13, 17, 20, and 23. All right, once you have those typed in, we're going to look at our graph. Now, when you type yours in, there's a, let's see, we'll go zoom, 6. You might have a window that looks like this, all right, where you don't see any of your points on there because it's not in that range. So we have a handy tool where we can go to zoom, go all the way down to number 9, zoom stat, press enter, and it'll make a window that fits all of your points. So now we can see that we have our points lined up in a pretty straight line for the most part. All right, we want to find the equation of that line. So to do that, we're going to go to stat, scroll over to calc, and then we're going to go down to lin reg for linear regression. Press enter. Now, the some calculators may not look the exact same because this is an 84, but you'll just press enter 
or go down to calculate and press enter and it'll load for a second and give you your linear regression. So we have y equals ax plus b. It tells you the form, which is slope intercept form, gives you your a and your b. It also gives us an r value. This r is our correlation coefficient. So we know that r is 0.98. So we know it's a positive correlation and it's a pretty strong correlation because it's really close to 1. All right, so we want to graph this line. You can always round or we can go to y equals and we can paste the line that the calculator got for us. So you go to y equals and you click on bars. And you'll scroll down to statistics, number 5. Then we're going to scroll over to EQ for equation. And that first one is REG EQ. Press enter and then it just pastes the line that it calculated for us. So we can go to our graph and we can see how that line runs really close to our points. You can see it's a good line of uh, best fit. Alright, so over here on our PowerPoint, we can say that our equation was let's see, y equals 0 0.1465 x, and you can scroll down, and see that we have plus 73.9675. So anytime you have to write your equation down, you can just round. All right, now, the second part of our problem wants us to predict the life expectancy of a person born in 2025. But remember, our years aren't, we wouldn't type in 2025, right? So 2025, the way we have it, would just be the 25th year. So if we go back to our graph, we can find our y value by plugging in an x value. So we can go trace, and then we can type in 25 for our x value. Oops. Make sure when you go type in trace that in the top left corner, we have our equation. So mine was on L1, comma L2, so I had to press the down arrow or the up arrow to get to Y1. Right? Now that Y1's in my top corner, type in 25, press enter, and we can see that the life expectancy would be 77.68 or 629, which if we round it like our table, we would have 77.6 years. All right, for our second example, we've got a quadratic regression. And the table below lists the total estimated numbers of AIDS cases by year of diagnosis from 1999 to 2003 in the United States. Write an equation that models the data and use it to predict the number of AIDS cases for the year in 2006. So we can see that 1999, we can say that could be our 0, 2000 could be our 1, we had 2, 3, and 4. So if we go to plug this into our calculator, make sure you go ahead and clear out your y equals. We don't want that line interfering with our other graph. Then we're going to go to stat, edit, and you're going to replace your L1 and your L2 with our new L1 and L2. So L1 is again the years, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And our L2 is our AIDS cases. So go ahead and type those in. Once you get those in, we can look at our graph. Now our other window doesn't work the same. So we're going to go to zoom 9, and we can see all five of our points. Just like before, we want to find an equation that shows a curve of best fit for us. So we can go to stat, calc, and now because we know this is quadratic regression, we can keep going down to number 5, quad reg. Alright, same thing as before. You want to calculate, let it load. And the top line is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So this is our standard form for our quadratic equation. It gives us our a, our b, and our c. So if we wanted to go ahead and write our equation, we can round. So you say y equals 345.14. 
x squared minus 1015.37 x and get the calculator out of the way and we have plus 41,543.09 apologize for the bad writing alright so there's our equation now we're going to want to graph this so we can go to our y equals and paste it in. So we go to VARS, go down to statistics, number 5, go over to EQ, number 1, press enter, and there's our equation. We can go look at our graph. And it kind of fits nicely between our points, averages out. All right. Our question wants us to predict the number of AIDS cases for the year in 2006. So remember our 2006 isn't going to be typed in as 2006 it's going to be typed in as 7 because right? it's 7 years from our 1999 year 0 All right? so we can go to our graph over here trace make sure top left corner is y1 and then we're going to type in 7 now you most likely got this error all right, so if we go look at that, that's only telling us that our window is not big enough because we can't go to 7. So to change that, we'll just go click on Window, and we'll just change our maximum for our X value to be 10 because we're trying to type in 7 for X. So now we can go back to our graph, let it load, and then we can trace. Again, make sure it's on Y1, trace 7, and we get our answer. So over here for our graph, or for 2006, we can say that there were 51,347 cases. Now we don't have a decimal for this because we can't have half of a AIDS case. So we'll just say 51,347. Our last example here is an exponential regression. This table shows the cooling temperatures of a cup of coffee. All right, we want to write an equation and use it to find when the coffee is at a temperature of 106 degrees. So we're going to go to our uh, calculator and we're going to change our list. First, make sure we go ahead and clear our y equals so that when we go to graph, it doesn't mess anything up or interfere with our graph. So go to stat edit. We're going to type in L1, our time, and L2, our temperatures. Once you get those in, you can graph it. Again, our window's off because it's still set from the last graph, so we can go zoom 9, and we can see our plot. All right, so we want to find the equation. We know this is exponential, so we're going to go on the same path we've been doing with uh, stat, calc. And now we're going to keep going all the way down to 0 for exponential reg. X reg. Press Enter. Same as before. You want to calculate. Give it a second. It tells us our form is y equals a times b to the x, which is our general exponential form. All right, we have our a and we have our b. So to write our equation, we can just round and say y equals 180.5 times 0 0.98 to the x. And our problem wants to know when the temperature of the cup is 106 degrees. This one's a little different. Instead of plugging in for x, we're going to be plugging in for y. So we want to know when 106 equals 180.5 times 0 0.98 to the x. To do that, we're going to go to y equals and type in each side of our equation as y1 and y2. All right, once you have it into y1 and y2, we can look at our graph. All right, we can see that we can't fit the whole thing in there, so we can go to zoom, and we'll just zoom out until we can. And I apologize for going so quick, but I'm about to run out of time in the video. And to find our time, we're going to find the intersection. So you go second trace, intersect. 
and you should get 26.35, which means it'll take about 26 seconds for the cup to get to 106 degrees.